Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and today we're going to be taking a look at Vase Mode. Now, um, this video is actually sort of in response to uh, Maker's Muse. A couple weeks ago, he did a video on Vase Mode, or as he says, Vase Mode, and he talked about some really interesting ways to use Vase Mode um, to get some things that you normally wouldn't see coming out of Vase Mode. And in that video, he created this little, it almost looks like an iceberg. Um, it's a very polygonal, um, really simple shape but it looks really freaking cool in vase mode. And a lot of people asked him for the STLs to print that, and he said, no, instead I'm gonna show you how I made this. And so he made a secondary video that showed how he created that model in Mesh Mixer. And it basically came down to using vertices to pull it around. And I will actually link to the video, check the eye up in the corner, or I'll put it down in the description as well. You should definitely check it out because it's really freaking cool. And then someone asked him on Twitter um, if something like that would be possible in Fusion 360, and he deferred to me on that question. So I figured it would be easier to make this in video form rather than trying to type it in 140 characters. So I am not the world's foremost expert in Fusion 360, but I am pretty well versed in there, and I'm going to show you my take on this. So the object that he shows, like I said, is very polygonal looking. It's made up of triangles. Um, and just very, very few of them. It looks awesome, and something like that would 100% be possible in Fusion 360. Um, it just may not be worth the effort. Because I think the simplest way to do it would just be taking um, some planes and orient them and doing a whole bunch of plane cuts to get that type of look, but that would be a huge pain in the butt. And the way he showed to do it in Mesh Mixer is extremely simple, really quick, and produces a great result. So if you're going for something that looks exactly like that, Mesh Mixer would be great. Um, also something like Blender would be really good. And any program that allows you to edit um, the positions of the vertices directly. Fusion 360, on the other hand, is a CAD program, and they do not allow that level of control. But they have some really, really cool other features. The one that I'm gonna be showing you today is, um, it's in the sculpting environment, in there and it basically uses curves so it'll produce something very organic looking but you can get some really curvy objects that would be very difficult in other programs like mesh mixer or blender or things like that um, to produce and it's very very simple so without further ado let's get into it so the first thing we're gonna do is open up fusion 360 and we're gonna go right into the create form um, module here and there's a few ways to do this I have it pinned up here because I use it quite often um, otherwise you can go to create and it is down here create form so if you click that you'll notice that the mode in Fusion 360 changes from model to sculpt and that just basically allows us um, a little bit more freeform modeling rather than um, your normal CAD procedures but I'm gonna show you where Fusion 360 really shines. So I'm gonna make an object similar to his, but it's not gonna be very polygonal, so it won't be um, sort of triangles making it up. It'll be um, much more curvy. So what I'm gonna do is, once I'm in the sculpt environment, I'm going to come to create, and um, I think I'm gonna do a cylinder. Now note that you have a ton of different options here to do some really fun different things. The quad ball's fun. Um, the torus, you know, you can do a lot of things, but I'm going to just come to cylinder and I'm going to stick it right on the ground and I will make it a um, hundred millimeters in diameter. So now we have this object here and you can see that there are rings around it. And the important thing to know about Fusion 360 sculpt environment is that you're dealing with curves. So it takes each one of these points and tries to um, figure out curves between them. So you're not dealing with vertices because if you'll notice that this edge right here is not flat, it is actually curved. So that does not follow normal vertice based modeling. And this actually allows us to do some pretty funky things. So in order to manipulate this, there are a couple of things you can do. Um, if you hover over it, the ones that will probably stand out to you the most are the faces. And that's if I click right there. What is highlighted in blue, that is a face. Now around each face, you have four edges. And you can click on those as well. And between each edge, you have a point. And also known as a vertice in most programs. And you can use any of these tools to move things around and you can even select multiple of them and do whatever you want here. You can go to an edge, double click it and it'll select the whole ring or things um, connected to that edge. So once you're here, how you actually modify it is click on something, right click and then go edit form. And then that will allow you to just start moving things around. And this is a very, very free form um, editing tool. 
So you'll notice if I slide this up, it'll change all of the curves to kind of match where I've placed everything after I moved it. So now you'll see that it's just kind of got a swoop up in the front there and it's affected points clear out here. So it's very different than normal vertex based modeling, but um, it's pretty intuitive and very fun to mess with. And you'll notice that I have several options here. So the arrows are pretty self-explanatory. You grab them and you can literally move what you're dealing with here. And these boxes in the center are the move tool as well. Whereas these arrows only move in one axis, this moves in two axes. And then the little bars on the outside are scaling and these scale in one direction. And this one on the corner scales in two directions. Then of course you've got your rotate tools around the side here and it's, if I turn the tool you'll see that more rotate options become visible. So I'm going to undo what I've done here just to get it back to a normal shape. And then one last thing is the center right here scales in every direction. But while I'm in this edit form if I double click on the whole thing it selects the entire object and then I can just scale this way and now I have quite a bit of a taller object. I'm going to move that up just so it's on the plane. You don't have to do that. That's just something I like to do. Um, and now I'm just going to start messing with the form. So I want this ring to be smaller. So I'm just going to grab the center tool here because that will scale everything uniformly. And I'm just going to pull it in. And so then right off to the start, we have this very nice hourglass shape. And I'm going to do the same to the top here. Move that in. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. And then this one I'm going to bring out just a little bit. And now you have all sorts of options in here for creating symmetry. Um, there's a whole symmetry tab here that you can click on two faces and it'll find the line between those and keep them perfectly symmetrical. So now if I um, hit OK, click over here and move this, this one on the other side will move as well, which is extremely handy. Um, I don't want that, so I'm going to undo. And I can add more edges if I need to. So if I double click here, come to modify and um, insert edge. You can see that it puts an edge there and I can move it wherever I want to. I'm gonna keep it at 0.5. And now I've got this that I can mess with as well. So that's kind of fun. And from here, I'm just gonna go and start to um, push and pull things a little bit until I've got a shape that's um, pretty interesting. So this is kind of a fun shape, but I think I want to do um, just a little bit more. I think I'm going to come in here and um, crease this edge right here. And that sort of breaks up the curves. So I'm just going to select what I want to crease and come up here to modify and then crease. And now you can see that it doesn't curve past there. It breaks it up completely. And um, I can come back in and edit this just like I would anything else. So I'll bring that back up just a skosh. And then the only thing we really have left is to fill up the holes on the top and the bottom because right now this is not a solid piece and that's a problem for 3D printing. So I'm just going to drag this up a bit. I'm going to make it quite a bit smaller. And then what I'm going to do is come into modify fill hole. And you can see it tries to smooth everything out to follow those curves. And we have a couple different options to get what you like. What you see now is reduce star. We can go to fill star and you can see it's a little bit different and then we can just collapse it and that's a little more true to what it was beforehand and if you want it to be exactly the same you can check this maintain creased edges and you can see there that's what we're left with but I think I like that um, so that's good but on this bottom ring I definitely want to keep that flat edge so I will go fill hole and I'm gonna go fill star and maintain edges so we're perfectly good there so I think this object is definitely interesting enough to give it a print. So I'm just going to go ahead and click finish form. And now, as you can see, we're back in the modeling area and we can do just the normal stuff that you do in Fusion 360 with these pieces. And you can see over here we have an actual body. Now, if yours doesn't look like this and um, it's like orange and basically trying to tell you that something's wrong, um, you most likely have not filled either of these holes. And when that happens, Fusion 360 is warning you that that's not a complete body. So all you need to do is come down here to the timeline and go back into your form and fix those holes. And one last thing, Angus talked about um, a plane cut. So if you have a form that does not have a flat bottom like this, but you still want to just cut it off and try it, you can actually come to Construct and then select Offset Plane. 
So then if you come over to the left side here and check this origin thing, you will see some planes that basically line up with the um, different axes. So I'm gonna select this one right here, which is aligned directly with the floor grid. And then I can drag this plane up to, say I wanted to cut it about halfway. So I'd bring it to about there, hit okay. And then I can come up to modify, uh, split body, and then I will select this body that we just created and then come over here and select splitting tool and select this plane. And you can see it puts a ring around here, hit okay, and now these are two separate bodies that um, you can select individually and export if you want to. But I don't wanna do that right now, I was just showing you how to do it in the event that you did wanna do something like that. So I'm gonna rename this, I'm just gonna call it vase mode test. And then I can right click on it and go save as STL. And then just follow the save dialogues to go through and save off your STL and it's ready for printing. All right, so here I have the printed object. Um, printed it in pink, you gotta support the 3D Pink Mafia, of course. And this is actually the first thing I've ever printed in vase mode. It's just something I've never experimented with before. Um, and it gave me a lot of insight. You can tell that I'm very used to um, modeling things that have infill. Because when modeling this, I was very careful to uh, make sure there wasn't any overhangs that would be too much for it to handle. But um, I did not pay attention to the top sides. So there are quite a few areas that did not print on this model. So um, you'll have to do better than I did on this one. But it's still um, printed, it came out really cool. Um, like I said, this is the first time I've even seen a vase mode um, print and it, it's very, very cool, very sleek. And I actually printed this at a little bit of a higher temperature than I normally do, so it's a bit shinier as well. All right guys, well I hope that was helpful and that maybe you guys learned a little bit something that you didn't know. Um, and basically the moral of the story is that Fusion 360, the sculpting environment is extremely powerful. It's what I make most of my stuff in. And you can get some really, really nice organic shapes and using some of these techniques mixed with some of the things that Angus showed off in Mesh Mixer and things like that, um, you can create some really cool models, I bet. So I'm actually gonna extend this challenge to you guys. Um, design something like this in Fusion 360, Mesh Mixer, whatever. Pick your favorite modeling program, create something, print it in vase mode, and then um, tweet me and Makers Muse the results. I'd love to see um, what you guys come up with. And make sure you do a better job than I did. Also, one last thing before I sign off. I still see occasionally people talk about not getting Fusion 360 because it um, is not free, but I just wanted to kind of um, add to that a little bit. Um, you can get it for free and you can use it. You just have to fill out some information at the beginning. And, and I think if you are like a startup or using it for educational purposes or something like that, you can get a year free. And after that year, you can just renew that license. So you actually don't have to pay for Fusion 360 until you are making, um, I think it was like $100,000 a year using Fusion 360. So if you're like me, you're completely covered there and you can use it completely for free. I will put a link in the description um, to check out Fusion 360. That's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I don't get any kickback. Um, I just genuinely love the program. And and I'd love to see um, a lot more people using it. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me. And until next time, keep creating.